Yes, I think I will start my presentation now. Uh, really fun to see so many people here. I thought uh, it was people up really late yesterday, so I was thinking, oh, maybe people will still sleep now, but fun to see you all here. Uh, my name is uh, Emily Lindqvist. Uh, I'm from Sweden, but I work in, in Norway. Uh, here you see a picture of me. A face down picture. Uh, I work as a designer as a, and a project manager in a company called uh, Already On. Uh, we're only two people in Already, already On. It's me and uh, my boss, Jens Christian Bang. And uh, we call ourselves a company without any technical skill. <laughs> we have our, our uh, technical skill in uh, Ukraine, and uh, one of the person here is. Oleg Nesterov. So, as I said, Jens Christian Mann. Um, my agenda. First, I'm going to um, just uh, start with the telling you about this system called the uh, shoe because uh, I'm making a lot of examples from that system and from creating that system. So it's good for you to know just some small facts about it. And then I start with why I call this um, presentation ergonomics and then I will tell you about the benefits of a kick-ass user interface and uh, then about our vision when we create uh, applications and uh, how we approach a project and uh, how we work with usability uh, our four key ingredients when we work with it and then some examples of usability from our projects. Does it sound good? Yes? Good. And if you have questions, don't hesitate, just ask. I love questions. So, uh, we had a presentation about show this uh, Friday as well, so some of you maybe have heard it before. It's an uh, association management system, uh, managing member information and data and communication with members. It's for NCA, a Norwegian choir association. They have 30,000 members, 1,000 choirs and 11 employees. So it's application uh, administrative application. So, why ergonomics? Uh, why ergonomics is because I have a degree in industrial design. I started as an industrial uh, designer and um, when you are an industrial designer, uh, the, one of the key thing you work with is ergonomics because ergonomics is the study of designing equipment and devices that fit the human's body, its movement and its cognitive abilities. And I call this uh, ergonomics for a web application because it's like a user interface for uh, applications because, because you know a chair should be nice and good to sit in and an application should be nice and easy to use. I think you can uh, apply it in some similar ways. And it's also uh, when I started working with user interface and user interface design, um, I was kind of amazed that user interface wasn't that big part of it, that a big part was it should look good. Uh, and because of my history with the um, industrial design, I started approach uh, some project a bit different and I will talk about that and how I uh, do project with the design process and uh, with user interface. So, what's the benefits of a kick-ass user interface? Uh, it's, of course, fewer support issues. Uh, you get better marketing values, happier customer and visitors, uh, better application and websites, and you uh, are being a part of making the web a better and more friendly place. I think one of the, the most important thing here is the, f the fewer support issues. I think, uh, anyway, that's important for me. Uh, so to have applications and website that people understand so they don't have to call and ask. And I think everyone like to have fewer support issues. So, our vision is to make the most user-friendly system uh, for the Norwegian market uh, built on open source. Uh, 
and it's about making uh, fewest and easiest click to do the task. Uh, I would say it isn't always about making the fewest click, it's about making the easiest clicks, because uh, even if you're only one click away something, it doesn't matter if you don't find the button. So, how do we approach a project? Uh, we are always interviewing the users, observing the users, discussing with the users, and making the user interface in Photoshop. I will tell you a bit later about this progress, um, what we do more uh, more specific, uh, but. For us, it's really important to work close to the customer. Um, when I work with a project, in the beginning of the project, I'm at the customer's office. I work next to the people that are going to work with the system. I see how they behave in the system they have today, if they have a system, uh, to know what I can do in the new system. Uh, also, of course, I'm discussing uh, all the process with the users and making the first sketches in Photoshop and have meetings all of the way with the customer, showing them pictures of what I'm creating so that they are really a big part uh, of the whole progress. Um, one of our customers said that um, when the suppliers spend time to understand our day-to-day -day task, we get a, get a really efficient system. It was really good comments from him. So, what are our four key ingredients to making a kick-ass user interface? Uh, of course, it's you should know your audience. Uh, I work with brainstorming as a tool and uh, I also practice some of the don't make me think thinking. If uh, some of you maybe have uh, read Stephen Krug's book, Don't Make Me Think, can you hold your hand up if you have? Cool. I think it's a really good book about the user interface. Uh, it's mostly about uh, web sites, but it can also be applied on when you create a web application in a really good way, I think. So I have some examples from his book that I want to point out. And then some about usability testing, because for me that's a really important part that many people uh, maybe don't spend as much time with as they should. And I mean, usability testing really early in the progress. So, uh, know your audience. Uh, that's important. The, um, a question for you is, uh, uh, do you think it's always important to talk with the user or a visitor? Yeah. What if it's uh, 30,000 users? <laughs> no, it's, it's a big known problem, but just to talk with one will help you. Because just uh, to make, uh, have one people, uh, human's thoughts, it's the double amount of your own thinking. So. I would say it's really important. But um, it's important to know uh, how they are or who do you want them to be if you create a website. I'm sure you uh, want some people to visit the website and who are they. And what's their main purpose in the application or on the website? Is it something uh, you want to sell or is it just something you want to inform about? Is it a lot of things you want to inform about? Uh, and what do they need? What do they need application or website for? And also what it's need to have and what's nice to have. Uh, it's important to have uh, like, oh, this is the key thing. This they need, really need. But this is also nice. So you should uh, accomplish that. So, if you have worked out some of those questions, you can better understand and build application or website you know they want is something instead of something you think they want. And it's also important to, when you have asked this question or when you have got these answers, to keep these answers during the whole process and sometimes take out this document again and just read it again and oh yeah, because when you're up 
I'm when I'm designing I'm sometimes sewing you know the shading of something or whatever it should look so fantastic and then I'm just oh wait what do they want or who are the user maybe this isn't that important so let's go back to the star again so brainstorming how many of you people are working with the brainstorming in a project yeah, some of you. Um, when I uh, studied in industrial design, there was, this was no project without brainstorming. This was like so important. And I think it's really important to brainstorm with, for example, that customer. Uh, I did this uh, for uh, this association member system. And uh, it's also important to not give criticism when you brainstorm. You just want everything out. I want the customer to have told me everything and I will uh, use brainstorming as one of the tools to get every bit of information from the customer I can get. So it's not when, the, that when I deliver a product they said, oh, I expected this. Um, when you have a brainstorm, it's really... Um, you get a lot of things out from the customer, even if it's something that shouldn't be in the system. That's really good as well, because then you know it shouldn't be, and they know it shouldn't be in the system. So it's as important to have those things as well, uh, the things that should be and the things that shouldn't be, and yeah. So um, for a member system, you can have uh, some uh, brainstorming, and you can have like this a lot of this. Uh, Post it. Uh, after I've had a brainstorming, and I try to at least have hundreds of those, uh, as many as possible. Just not thinking, just saying what you think, thinking when you think about the, the system, and you spin off what other people say, and yeah, all that. But after I have uh, done this, I do a priority. I go through the notes and said, this is important. This is a key feature in the system, or this is only secondary or third, or you can have a scale from one to ten if you want that, uh, depending, I think, about the size of the project and stuff like that. And here you can also sort out the things that shouldn't be in the system. Um, this is to get a view of uh, the system and what's the important uh, parts and after I've done this I also do uh, a frequency I see uh, okay how often do you need this feature is it weekly is it daily is it monthly because even if they think it's a really important task maybe they only do it once a month so why should it have a big space that they see every day when they log in for appli in application for example uh, it isn't that important you can hide it in another uh, way that you only need should be easy to access, of course, but it it's, doesn't have to be a main part of it. So therefore I do this um, frequency and uh, priority things with after I've done a brainstorming. I don't know, is, is this something you do as well? Yeah. So, yeah. There's a lot of w ways to uh, deal with this. You can also, of course, if it's a really big system, you also need to divide it up to different categories. And maybe you need to do a priority list for every category. So it's uh, many ways to do it. So, don't make me think. Uh, I think it's, uh, this is an uh, important thing thing to think about <laughs> it's to not think now to not let the user think too much um, I have an example from the book uh, it's uh, Stephen Cook's wife she said if something is hard to use I just don't use it as much sure you think that's true yeah and uh, but I can say if something hard to use do you use it no <laughs> Exactly. And if you find an easier solution, you just skip the first one because it's too hard. And um, I can say I honestly only give websites a couple of seconds before I leave them if I don't find what I want. Because the web is so big, so I know I can find it another place. Here's another example. 
about uh, the obvious thinking and uh, the required thought thinking when you uh, like just um, can be a menu item instead of call it contact you call it something else because it's much cooler but it makes the visitor had to think before they click and then it's they don't like the site as much, uh, it's required thinking and it takes, uh, even if it's just a millisecond, it's still, maybe they leave the website because they didn't see it like that. So it's important what you name uh, the functionality as well, or as I said, the menu item or what is called, it should be um, as short and clear as possible. Um, also, the design, of course, when you see it's a button, you click instantly. But if you're not sure it's a button, you oh, maybe I click here, or maybe I just don't see it at all, or I don't know, so I'm a bit... It's, it's still like that, you don't... A user don't um, many users are a bit afraid of clicking if they don't know if they can click, and yeah. If you want someone to leave their contact information or whatever, it should be obvious, click for them to do that. Sample uh, links, you can do them a bit different. You can do them with just a color and you can have an underline and you can have an icon as well and the button. You can really make, make it easier. And uh, of course, it's sometimes hard with designing as well because you uh, maybe you think, no, it doesn't look nice. I just want a bit different color. But uh, if you are thinking about uh, the user, do it like a big button because uh, more people will understand it. I can promise you that. So people do not think alike. I can say that for sure. Like a designer, you think it's picture and flash and everything should look so nice. And marketing directly, you maybe think about marketing values and uh, money. And uh, as a developer, you more think about the code and the function and stuff like that. So what do we do with all these people thinking all these different thoughts? We just not, don't let them think. You just make it so self-evident that they don't have to think because when they start to think, you know, everyone don't think alike, so it's bad. So that's my goal, I think, also when I create something. I don't want, I want it to be self-evident. I want them to understand instantly, oh, here is that. So usability testing, is it a lot of people here doing usability testing? Yeah, some of you. <laughs> um, I think in uh, in they do it in big company. They have a whole you know uh, apartment that makes usability testing. They are people, five people. They have a room and they film the person and every move and every uh, they ask a question. They have them there for three days and you know all this. Um, sure. If you have uh, if you have the time and money, you can you can do that. But um, it's not like sometimes you think, no, it's too time consuming, or it is too expensive, or it is really difficult, and we don't have the right equipment, or uh, we don't know what to do with the result. And I think this is really good. I think um, I've been thinking about it, them as well, all these things, but. Um, I just scale it down. I do really the basic usability testing, but the one I think is essential to make something uh, user friendly. Um, it's too time consuming. I would say you can do a usability test in 30 minutes. Um, and therefore, it's not getting that expensive. And also, you get so much. Uh, right there and not in the end of the process instead and therefore you save money instead. Uh, it's really difficult, it's not difficult. You only need a computer and a picture and someone to test it. Um, yeah, as, as we don't have the right equipment, you don't need a camera, you just need a person and you need a pen and a paper. So, 
Uh, I'm going to take an example because I, in this shoe project, I did usability testing uh, already in my first sketches because I wanted to know how they react to my uh, sketches. So I'll, uh, I show them uh, just a Photoshop file uh, of the system and I ask them some question like, uh, where do you think you need to click to add a new choir? Or uh, where do you think you can search? Or where do you do this? And instantly I got feedback also about uh, functions. They said, oh yeah, but what about we want to see in this listing page, we want to see the address as well because we got calls um, every day when, where they ask if the, they have the right address and they don't want to click into that choir and look at the address, they want it in the listing. So it's things like this, you can get the information really early in the process before any programming is done. Um, and also they understand because we understand once again say oh but I want a button for this as well or like here I was like oh I can deactivate the choir but why can't I activate it and stuff like that you find out really quickly later we find out that the export to Excel wasn't essential to have here because it wasn't a day-to-day -day task it was only things they did once a month so instead we moved that to the report part um, and we changed a lot of things um, like like this. And um, another thing I think it's really important, I say you should do this testing and uh, discussion with the customer. I also do this with the developers because I want to have their opinion. I want to know if I'm thinking in the smartest way or do they have some feedback that ha I haven't thought about. Um, and I can say I got really good feedbacks from my developers. As you see up in the corner, you see it's my last visited choirs. I thought that which should be really good because then you see what you have done in the system before and you can go back because often I saw when I sit down with them, when they used their old system, it was the same choir they work with all day so they need a quick link to go back to that and I then talked to the developers and said, they said but why shouldn't you have the last edited as well the one you have done changes on I said oh that's brilliant so I added that in the design as well so as important I think it's to go through all with the customer to get good feedback. It's also important to include the developers in the process. And uh, I can promise you also, they think it's, uh, it's nice to be a part of this early process and not only get a PSD and just do this. Instead, they get to be a part and can, uh, can feel like, oh, this, I did this. So this is uh, my part of the solution. So, I have some uh, example of uh, usability from our uh, projects. And you see, saw the earlier sketch before, and now you, can, you will see the final. It isn't that much change, but for me it is, it is a lot. Oh wait. First, I am going to talk about what we love to do when it comes to usability. We love tabs and ribbons. Anyone here also loving tabs and ribbons? No? The user love it as well, or I have experience that they do anyway. Because they are self-evident, they are hard to miss. Uh, they can be anyway, they can be bad looking as well, but they can be really good looking. And they also uh, suggest a physical space. I have uh, some example of uh, ribbons here. Uh, people always understand that, oh, this is in front now, and then I can click there, and that's coming in front. When, when I start designing with uh, ribbons, uh, I was like, um, oh, I want it to be kind of cool and flashy as well. I want to have mouse over. When you move to another ribbon, I want you to see it in mouse over. Yeah, that was kind of, it should be really cool, but it wasn't user friendly. Uh, because as a user, uh, when I did some testing, I found this out because when you're a user, you want to click and, oh, now I'm here. Click, yeah, now I'm here. You don't want to, oh, what was that? You get a bit 
afraid and you don't want to see too much. On the website, of course, that could be another another thing because on the website you're more uh, likely to just get an overview fast and see some information, but on an application you're more, I'm here, okay, now I go there. You have more uh, tasks that you really know what to do instead of a website, you're more, oh, I don't really know what, what I'm doing here. And also, we love icons. How many of you love icons? Oh, that was a few more. <laughs> uh, I can say they are hard to miss. Uh, they are faster to perceive than text. They add aesthetic values. And a picture says more than 1,000 words, or sometimes more than 100,000 words. And people are really getting used to uh, icons as, as it is. And you know when you're used to, you know what an icon do instead of uh, you don't need to read something, you can just click on the picture because it's faster. So it's also this, don't make me think, thinking. <laughs> Uh, so I work with icons when I do uh, menus, when I do uh, uh, product uh, specifications, yeah, in, in every way I can I s try to use icons and pictures uh, for the user. You can see here, yeah, icons for air travel, train travel commuting. We have icons on our uh, website for the different parts. It also makes it uh, uh, more aesthetic. And customers use icons for specification of products, for example, in a web shop. Instead of uh, reading the whole specification, just text, you can just look at a picture and understand it's uh, uh, like here, it's, uh, it's um, lock with fingerprint, for example. We also love colors. I hope you all love colors. Hand? Yeah. <laughs> They're hard to miss. They are one of the first thing you notice, and they help you understand a message clearer. They clarify and reinforce messages. When you, uh, for example, get a message and it's a triangle and it's yellow and red, you know, oh, this is bad. Uh, if it was just a small message, just uh, plain uh, black text on the white background, you wouldn't have the same. This, it wouldn't have the same effect, and it's the same when you um, get the green message or the OK. You feel a bit better. You did something right, and you you want that. You want the user to feel that as well. So I worked a lot with that. When you like fill in fields, you get that message on the way. You get OK and green for every field you do it right, and if it's not, you get a message how to do it uh, the right way. I will give you some examples of that as well. So now, this is um, a picture of the Finnish project. I think we'll have time I can go through uh, a bit of a live demo instead. Login screen. Maybe you are wondering why I have a Russian computer. It's my developer's Oleg's computer, so I don't speak Russian. But I would like to learn. Oh. This is you. <coughs> Try again. So we have a local installation, so we don't trust the internet. <laughs> or the internet connection, I trust the internet. Mm. So here you see um, the system. Um, I'm in on the tab called choirs. I see a list of all the, the choirs. Uh, I can click on them, you see they are on the line, to get more uh, information in uh, another window and uh, this was because of some usability testing because when I was sitting next to a customer when they worked with the system they could work um, changing some info on one choir and then they got a phone call from the other choir that wanted to know something 
And before, in the old system, they had to go out of that card and go back, search up the other pie, go into that, and then go back again. So instead, I wanted them to be able to work with different windows, have uh, more than one quiet to work with at the same time if they wanted to. Uh, I also work with marking where you are, so you always see. And if it's a link, like this, it's the leader, it's a person, you can click on that and also get the information of that person. And um, there were also a big issue with them. They didn't know if the choir was active or not. They had a small, small, small icon in the right corner if it was uh, had paid or was active at all. So they could have talked with the choir like for one hour in the phone and then they hang up and they were just, oh, oh my God, they are not even members. And I've spent time talking to, to them. Oh, that, that's not good. So we wanted to emphasize that, yeah, it's an active choir. So you know that instantly when you are inside it. And as I told you before about this, uh, okay, you know, phone, you can't write something like that. When you get a message, now you have to fill it in with digits. Okay, let's do that instead. And you instantly get a okay message. Yeah, that was good. I feel good. I did something right. And also, when I press save, <coughs> I also get this uh, OK message up here. I know this has been saved, and it's um, really ensuring for, for them to know this. In their old system as well, they had, when they started to writing in a field, the old data in that field was gone. So they were really, they didn't really there to start writing something if they didn't know it was right or was sure there wasn't someone coming and saying something so they forget something. All these messages, they can also like, they don't need to have them. If they don't want to see them, they can just take them away. But it's good they instantly get an error if it's not saved then and then, then they know. And they can click in the different uh, tabs and see the different information. Um, as you see here, it's a person and you have get a little icon in the beginning because it's their uh, contact card, so therefore you see that uh, instantly that you can click on them. And you see the ED and phone and type and all these uh, listings. Uh, I also go through all the pictures with uh, with them, so they know uh, what was um, what they wanted in the listing, what they wanted before they clicked. As I said before, when they got a phone and uh, someone wondering about something, if this phone was uh, the same information, people called about several times a day. They wanted, of course, the information in the listing because then it's faster. But if it was something um, people only asked about like once a year. Instead, you had it when you went into the contact card. You got that information. So another thing we um, worked a lot with was this uh, filtering. Uh, when you when you want to, uh, for example, um, search, but you, you don't want a specific search, you want to know, for example, here I have all the districts, and I want to know uh, which district have more than, let's say, 20 members, um, because this was something, some statistic they really needed often, because it was always also something people call them to ask about. Uh, and before they had to like go out, make a report, and the report had every field, you know, from the whole system. So it took them like, maybe two hours to get this information. Here instead, we added uh, filtering. So you can add a new filter, and you can filter on every field in the listing. You can, for example, then um, do it on <coughs> choirs. Um, so district with more than 20 choirs. And you, they can also save this kind of filtering. And when they pick save uh, store, 
they get to name it, but not before. It's uh, also, you can say, usability, because why um, should you see a field if you're not using it? So it's first when you say, I want to store it, you get the field for, for name. And you can just submit uh, the filter and you see instantly you get only the district with more than 20 choirs. But then I'm just now I'm more interested in never quiet in and commit. It's one of the regions they have four. So I want to add a filter by region and I pick that one and I say it have to be equal mit and I submit the filter. And instead, I only get the choirs in Encomit with more than 20 choirs. So in this way, they can easily find that um, information that is so important for them. Uh, because, yeah, of course, they want to know how many members they have day to day and all that. Because they, the organization is all built around these members. Of course. Here you see also up in the top, as I talked to before, this last edited and last viewed. You have both, not only last uh, viewed. And it's also something when we uh, did the, the testing with the custom testing on the on the real system. It was something they instantly used. It was like, oh yeah, I added them. And there was, I used the. Uh, mm, I was working with this choir before and now I need to go back and check some data again. So it's often used. Mm. Oh? <laughs> you didn't see that, okay? <laughs> and here you see in the filter you have uh, saved. Uh, you can also delete them and you can edit them, but you don't get the icons until you are mouse over. I think that's also to not have too much in in one view. Uh, I think sometimes it's important to, to use this mouse over view also. I have uh, another example, but it's only a uh, screenshot but right now I'm working on uh, yeah by the way this is the contact card for a choir and here you see that some fields are marked out with blue and that's the field that's um, uh, what NCA the customer told me when we look at the choir's information the first thing we want to know is the name the other thing we common commonly want to know is the leader or the um, AE contact or the dirigent, as it's called. Uh, so that was information that we wanted to be a bit more, bit different, but still, yeah. Uh, and I'm working on a project right now, and I'm willing. It's um, it's more of a CMS system, but it should be. Um, really bulletproof CMS when they, because it's uh, people are just going to go front end for a website and add, add articles that should look nice, but they have no, uh, they don't know CSS, they don't know anything about creating. So I uh, created, I've started creating a system where they first name the article and when they named it instantly, they get an okay for that. And they then they, sh um, pick a template for that article, like a CCK you can think with different content types, but instead you have example of them already here. So it's just um, some of it. And also when you pick one there, you get the green. The next is getting green. So I use a lot of colors for them to understand the, the whole process. That was just a small example. So, does anyone have any questions? No questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, on the list of you, you had uh, kind of the standard zebra striping uh, for the rows, but then the name column is in blue, and I wondered what, what, what was the name. Ah, yeah. This also uh, because that's um, 
that's the field they are looking for most of the times. So therefore, uh, it also is emphasized in, in blue and the marking with the blue of the whole line where you are mouse over. The white space above the, above the river, is this intentional or only to show, you, to show the product stand? Because I think it's isn't this a waste of space? Waste of space? Yeah, um, it uh, depends. We have um, this uh, product to more customers, so sometimes they want their own logo in the system as well. And then we have it there. Uh, but you can also um, work with this system inside of Joomla, and then on the top you have the Joomla settings. Yeah. You're using a lot of uh, mouse overs. Yeah. Mm, you mean like uh, I tablets? tablets. Um, this uh, system isn't uh, designed for tablets. So that isn't something we had uh, work with in this process. But I think maybe later when we do a, a version for that or think about that more, we will regard that. Yeah, uh, I understand that's a, that's a big problem. I think it, it can uh, be solved. Um, I think the use of, for example, icons instead of text and stuff like that can help it. But, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And some of the things instead you need to have that you click instead of mouse over. So that's one way to do it. But if the click is a easy click and not a thinking click, that's all right, I think. Um, yeah, sometimes the customer and the user are the same person, and sometimes they uh, they are not. And then it's like, of course, you always have to do what the customer wants because, of course, they are your customer. But sometimes um, you can, for example, make that feature a bit smaller because you know that the user it isn't that important, but you still want to satisfy the customer, so you have it. But making it, The thing with the, this system, uh, just to answer the first thing, is that it's both user that uses Joomla and want to use the system, so therefore we have it in Joomla as well, and we have users that not have, do not have anything to do with Joomla, uh, so therefore we have it not uh, yeah standalone. Um, I think for me. Um, my customers isn't that um, haven't worked with Joomla that long, so they don't have really that relationship with Joomla, so that it would be easier if it was that kind of control. And this is also a system with they sit and working like a lot of hours each 
each day. Uh, so I think the winning uh, of um, learning them a new way, even if it's a bit different from standard Joomla, is uh, so much, even if the learning curve is a bit higher. I think the end product of the all will make it better. Was if you satisfied? Yeah, I, I want to do admin template <laughs> for you. Well, that is something I, I really want to do someday. But um, yeah, it's just um, I just need someone to want it, and then I can create it. <laughs> yeah, but that would be really great. I would like to do that someday. It so de depends on the, on the product, how, how big the project is. If it's an easy web page, maybe only one meeting before the, the final. Uh, but also when I've done the final design that I say is the final design, I go through every slide, every little thing with the customer. So I get an OK on all that. And even then I get some small changes on that final meeting. But after that is final, they have written that this is the final thing we want. How do you mean? Yeah, I do. I have my, uh, my own <laughs> Photoshop uh, system, but you should see this file. It's like I, I'm not sure, but I can maybe a thousand layers. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it is because it's like you said. I I can view all the other parts in the same Photoshop file. It's the master Photoshop file. <laughs> yeah. You had <it>? yeah. <laughs> uh, what's your um the first image you showed uh, your client had was designed. It wasn't necessarily. Uh, I was wondering how you could split the design from the user interface, like uh, maybe use mockups where you can mm. show where things go and it separates out. Uh, what about the client? Because the client sort of says, oh yeah, that's great, but can that be, can that be red? Mm. You know, and it's not necessarily focusing on the tasks that people are doing. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, uh, in that case I work a bit different because uh, my knowledge says that if I come with a uh, wireframe that isn't finished or what do you say, don't have all the color elements and stuff, they don't really see the system. The customer don't understand the system. They don't um, see it as a finished product and therefore they can't do the usability uh, testing because it's just... Why from? That's how I work. I know it's a lot of other ways to work as well. But it's the, I think that's also something I took from industrial design. When you did, when you do a product, you do real uh, examples early in the progress. Yeah.